everyone. Hope all is well. My name is Stacy Pryor, owner of the Ida Mae Brown Foundation, IMB Studios and Podcasts. And today we have a very special guest, someone that's near and dear to my heart. We have Grammy nominated producer Antoine Kangaroo Brown from Nashville, Tennessee. How you doing, Antoine? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for coming and Absolutely. hanging out with us today and interviewing with me. What's going on with you? Tell me some background about yourself. All right, so um, I'm a music producer from the east side of Nashville. I'm a native. Um, so, I mean, the, the bigger part about, you know, about, I guess, me, like, in the summer is um, I'm really just exercising my gift, my okay. God-given talent. You know yes. what I'm saying? Making sure that um, I can also lead by example because I was summer. Okay. So, um, just doing everything the right way. Staying away from all the foolishness. I know that's right. I know that's right. Yeah. What how uh what made you passionate about music and how old were you when you first got into it, when you first got started? Um so I was about fifteen. <clears throat> music just it, it kinda just found me. Okay. It wasn't at a point to where I'm just, you know, how most everybody say, I'm gonna be a, a music producer. No, it wasn't like that for me. Uh -huh. But I mean, I've always been a lover of music, always listen to it constantly, no matter what, whether I'm cleaning up or, um, you know what I'm saying, I done got in trouble or, you know, I ain't supposed to be listening to music, you yeah. know, whatever. But, like, as I, I've always been just a lover of music just in general. So, um, in the midst of, like, when I found out about it, <clears throat> excuse me, I had a friend of mine who passed away, but he really was the segue to everything mm -hmm. musically for me. So, what happened, we was actually just, you know, hanging out in the neighborhood. Uh, another friend of ours, he was like, hey, y'all come here. So he was like, yo, did you know that you can make music? Like, beats like you hear on the radio. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at him like, how? I'm like, <laughs> I ain't never heard nobody doing nothing like that. Like, you got to have all the high-tech equipment, yeah. so I'm thinking. He was like, nah, look. So he played some stuff, and I'm, I was just in shock. I'm like, bro, there's no way that you did that. He was like, yeah. Wow. You know, and like, uh, and my friend, he was like, well, he said something about the program or whatnot. So he was like... Let me take it home. I'm finna get ready to go do it too. And I'm like, well, I'm finna go up your house and watch what you're doing. So from there, um, as he was doing it, I'm sitting there odd just watching him like, I can't believe I'm like watching this in real time. I'm thinking this was impossible until I was able to see it. Then, so how long did it take you to pick up on? Maybe an hour mm -hmm. to get like to get from an idea in my head to like me being able to duplicate what I was, you know, what I was hearing or what I wanted to hear, rather. But from that point, you know, it just, the hour, the hour start adding up, and yeah. then I start remembering what I'm doing. I'm like, okay. So, it went from hours now to, like, minutes on hand. So, how did you feel when you made your first beat? I feel, I feel like I was on all the drugs. I couldn't sleep. I was like, man, like, is this what this feels like? I, I mean, I could do this for free every day. I mean, from that point, like, it, it truly felt like, like when I first realized what I did, and I'm like, I'm excited. I was, it was so, it was so exciting to the point to where I legit didn't sleep for like the. It took me two days. Uh huh. For me to actually like yeah. go to sleep, let it sink in. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm when I went to school the next day. The only thing I'm thinking about, I'm like, man, I can't believe I did that. Yeah, all day long. And then back then we listened to like CD play, like Walkman. Yeah. So I I learned how to burn the music. I learned how to put the music onto the CD. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening to it. I ain't supposed to be listening to it in school. I'm trying to sneak and listen to yeah. it. I'm yeah. trying to go to the bathroom extra time so I can listen to it. But like like it was super obsessive fast. Okay. Well, speaking of school, where did you go to school? Um. So as far as like in pertaining to music, I went to SAE Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. um, that's in the heart of Nashville, Tennessee, um, on a familiar street, music related, called Music Grow. Wow. So they have, it's a, like a lot of history based into uh, big artists from the old school to now. Yeah, right. <clears throat> from the, the likings of Ray Charles to Stevie Wonder to people that everybody know now, like Beyonce. 
rappers or, or you know of all of all genres. And so, for those of you that don't know, Music Row is a very historical place in yeah, Nashville, Tennessee. Considering sure. we are the music city, so you know that is a very very historical uh, street. Yeah. Now, um, what inspired you to start Kangaroo Productions? Once music was like a like a you know, everyday had like habitual thing, I was like, okay, well, I want to take this thing serious, but in my mind, I'm like, with anything that's great, you got to come up with a good name. Right. So for me, I said to myself, like, I plan on like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to be the absolute best, but I have to have a name that stands out that you can't forget, but all legends and greats have strange or like different names, but it, it may mean something. Right. So for me, I was just asking my friends, like, I got to come up with a cool name. But I wanted, you know, I wanted to stand out. It don't have to be just, you know, I was thinking of just something just, like, very, very big and massive. But uh, a friend of mine, he said kangaroo. And my other friends started laughing, but I, I, was, I didn't laugh. I got to thinking, like. So what did kangaroo mean to you? So in relation I just wanted to come up with a cool name. At first, I didn't have anything to tie me into it at first. Uh -huh. So I was like, okay, well, I'll sleep on it. You know, <clears throat> so that weekend, this is what made me choose. It. So after that was the last name that was said. And then I said, well, I just come back to trying to figure out names and stuff like that. So we had that conversation on a Friday. For the entire weekend, I watched TV and it was at random. I came to ask my mom a question. I came downstairs and seen a kangaroo across the screen. So, so they then, solidified. <laughs> yeah, but then I'm like, okay, it's odd, but okay, like what up? I go to the store, just a regular grocery store, and it was a radio commercial and they spoke about kangaroo. Wow. And I'm like, it's odd, it's like the second time. And then I watched the movie. And within that movie, it had like it had a clip of someone actually. It was a kangaroo that kind of came out of pouch. I'm like, how ironic is it for me to be able to hear and see kangaroo multiple times yeah. after the fact? Yeah. And I'm it like, okay, something. yeah, it means something. Yeah. So for me now, in relation, um, just like learning, like okay, if I'm gonna use this name, I gotta know about what you know, like how does this name connect? So the bigger, the biggest part of my connection point would be. Um, my music make you bounce like right. I can't Wow, you know what I like it. That's catchy too. Yeah. My music make me bounce. Yeah, I like that. So, did you ever think that Kangaroo Productions would lead you to where you at now? Nope. I ain't gonna even lie. Nope. <laughs> nope. So my like my my whole goal was really just want to be heard. Like I was so I was inspired so much about like me actually being able to create music and stuff mm -hmm. the biggest thing i just wanted people to hear like that was like the beginning and end of okay. everything for me but i understood and i was i guess i was made aware to like what else can come with it mm -hmm. and i'm like okay well <clears throat> you can get paid for it i'm like okay mm -hmm. well that's a plus you know i can win awards or i can you know be the best at this or i can grow a company or like it's many different things that came with it which made me kind of change my, like, change how I looked at it. But okay. I never, I never really pictured myself or I guess I didn't have the mind frame to say this is what I wanted until, like, being able to be heard and different things kind of come in my way actually came about. Okay. But I didn't have a mindset to be like, yeah, I'm just doing this to get rich. Or mm -hmm. Nothing, no, I didn't have that mind frame at all. But speaking of awards, since you mm -hmm. said that, tell me about the NEMA Association. So the NEMA Association. And what does that stand for? So NEMA stands for Nashville Industry Music Awards. Mm -hmm. So it's a Nashville-based company. Um, they they are honor. Um, they honor and award just different talents amongst like the Nashville area. Um, so I guess even if you, I guess even if you like coming from other places and you, mm -hmm. you know, you base, this is your new base, mm -hmm. <clears throat> they bring awareness towards like different qualities of music, different people who, you know, who actually exercise talent amongst, you know, all the talent in that. Okay. So, yeah. So did you receive award or yeah, what I, was the award for? I, 
I won the producer of the year. I forget what year it was, but I won the producer of the year. And at first, I didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was made aware to me. I seen it off of a Facebook post. It was somebody who tagged me when they was doing voting. So in my mind, you know, I'm just still like working, doing my thing. I knew nothing about it. So when I was made aware and I seen, I'm like, well, what is this? And then I'm like, well, what's name? I'm like, oh shoot, I gotta go do some homework. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was famous and didn't even know. Yeah, what I'm like, I want. But again, I think the the beautiful part is. That's not my my focus wasn't on the awards and the accolades. It was just literally just being heard. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So from that, like, you know, I did my research, found out like who's who, what's what, uh -huh. and then found out that um found out I was nominated in that category and then ended up winning that year. Oh, okay. That is awesome. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, dear. So with by by you receiving that award, what doors has that opened for you? So the bigger part of it, the, the good part about it, when I did win it, it allowed like a lot of awareness. Mm -hmm. So the biggest, of course, the biggest thing is just like if you start a business. Right. If people know you have a business, like you're problem solving in whatever business you got. So that allowed for people to know like, oh, he works with all these people. Mm -hmm. And this is what his music sounded like. Oh, we've been looking for that. Yes. So it brought more attention, more clientele and stuff my way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, let me let's talk about your Grammy nomination for being a producer. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. So, like, <laughs> so the essence of when I was nominated, so it all came like after the fact that I got signed. I'm signed to a label called Track or Die. Uh huh. So, within me um, <clears throat> working within the label, it's an opportunity mm -hmm. I came across, and um, a lot of people kind of pass over it because. Um, well, for different reasons, but I'll say that it was for different reasons. But my thing is, again, like in the midst of wanting to be heard, even when I was, to, you know, on the, the highest level of professionalism, mm -hmm. like, again, like my goal is not to be rich. Of course, I, I want to be wealthy and make mm -hmm. money and stuff like that. But my goal is really to like create history. Right. That's one thing you can't yes. take away. I agree. Like after the fact that I'm gone, like I'm always gonna be able yes. to change history. And that's what music me. can do. Right. So that's always been my thing. I wanna be able to build a legacy and have something that my family can be proud of. Yes. So saying all that, when I seen it, <clears throat> I know most people wouldn't have taken the shot because it was for like children. Mm -hmm. So I said at the time I didn't my son wasn't here, so I'm like, well, at least I can make something he can listen to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Instead of like everything else, yeah. like everybody else want to cater to rap or yeah. RB, and that's yeah. great. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong, but what about for kids? Yes. You know Somebody what I'm saying? Somebody has to be their role model. Exactly. So yes. I'm like, well, nobody's taking a shot at it. So, you know, I did my research to see like what, you know, what they stand for, yeah. um, what type of music they, they're making, what they're looking for. And then once I found out, I'm like, okay. Well, I'm going to take a shot. Nobody else taking a shot. I'm going to take a shot. So what's the name of the song? So I actually, the funny part is I had three different records that were selected. Okay. And I wasn't the only one that would, had records selected. So we had like out of the entire label, we had like a total of like four or five. Really? Four wow. or five records out of their whole album. So the name of the group is called Alphabet Rockers. So the Alphabet Rockers is... um. They promote a lot of things from like awareness to mm -hmm. um, um, LGBTQ community, um, from non-bullying. Okay. Just they promote something like a positive notion to say, like "Hey, you can be yourself." Um, you know, like don't be afraid to be yourself, whomever you are, and yeah. just showing that you know they're not the only person that feel the way they may feel in any facet, whether it be want to be friends or dealing with different problems or, you know, whatever it may be. Just actually being a beacon of light to say, you know, <clears throat> you know, we can all kind of, you know, work together with love and that'll kind of solve the, the problems that we have, basically. Okay. So once I realized what they stood for, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm down. Yeah. So from there, I had three, I had three different tracks that they selected. Which, uh, amongst their promotion and where they were leading to, um, <clears throat> amongst your success, you have to hit a certain threshold to even be considered 
to be within the the a nominee within the Grammy Association. So what is that threshold? So it just depends on what category you're in. Okay. So it can be within um how like it could be within like how well you do as far as how well your music streams. It can be um, your outreach towards how many people know you know who you are or you know what you stand for or whatnot. So it's anybody can like submit to say, hey, I want to be a part of this, but people have to vote to say, I like. Okay. I like this this entity or person or whatever. Mm-hmm. From there, when you beat out votes. It's almost like you voting towards the very end, just like if I was nominated for the producer award for the names. Mm-hmm. The Grammys is kind of like within the same thing. Okay. So once you build, once you build an awareness and you have music to back that up, you then have people in different categories, to, you know, leading up to like the big, you know, the big award to say who is the best. Okay. This year, it it kind of sort of trickling effect. Okay. But yeah, it, it definitely leads up to it. so. How did you feel when you was Grammy nominated? Disbelief. <laughs> Dis- <laughs> That's big business Dis- right Dis- now. I'm like, is, hold on, wait, is this real? What? Like, what? what? Swar Brown. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was super surreal. I think that was probably that. Just knowing, like, I'm going for something bigger yes. than myself, bigger yes. than money, bigger than you know everything that I've actually attempted yes. to, and I didn't just. Land one record, I landed like three. Now that's amazing. Yeah, you know, some people struggling just to get that one and, out there. And, so, exactly. You know, so, and that was three. my thing. I'm like, I got three records on the first on oh, the first my. attempt. Oh, I know that was so exciting. And here's the crazy part: I submitted five instrumentals, and they picked three out of five. Oh my god! So my thing was, it was it was surreal. It was super surreal. So even leading up to, like, even think to potentially go to the Grammys for I'm like me. I get a chance to go to the Grammys yes. for something I worked on oh. in front of the entire world. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah, it was it was surreal. It's still yeah. like I think about it now, <clears throat> a lot of people would flaunt. They'll flaunt like their successes and stuff like I still kind of feel like anybody can do humble. It. Yeah. I love it. I love that about your cousin. Yeah. And for those those of you that don't know, this is my cousin. You know, he's so also a member of the Adam A. Brown Foundation. Uh, so I just had to throw that out there. Yeah, and I thank sure. you so much for coming to share your story. Because what advice would you give someone who's entering into the music industry, um, who's not a rapper, who you know wants to go in another direction? What advice would you give them? Um, be sure that's what you want to do first off. Okay. Um, be intentional. Make sure you like. Make sure you really are willing to do what it takes to actually be successful. You know, um, but I mean, if it's if it's really in you and it's like it's real to you, you just gotta keep going until it happens. Yes. Yeah. It, <clears throat> ain't no ain't no overnight success and all that. Like I've been, I've probably been doing music now since I've been doing it since two thousand and five. Okay. Professionally, because you know you play at church. So yeah, so no, I'm saying like <laughs> yeah. as far as me doing music, when yeah. I decided to take it serious, it was in 2005. Yeah. yeah, I've been doing this professionally since 2017. Okay, so all around, I have almost 20 years of sweat equity. Yes, so yes. that comes with like a lot of sacrifice, a lot of discipline. Um. You definitely gotta you gotta give up something to get something. You know, I, so, I totally understand. Sleepless nights, times you wanna go out, yeah. you know, you wanna go out and kick it. No, you big to, sacrifice. Yeah, you gotta you have to you gotta read, you gotta learn, you gotta listen, and you have to put in hours upon hours upon hours to really like really wanna do it, whether you're a, a videographer, whether you wanna be in management, you gotta be able to network and learn how to talk to people, show love and respect. Um be willing to show love and not expect anything in return. Right. Like it has to <clears throat> your like your your morals and values really will reflect your success. Mm-hmm. Like when it comes to doing anything, especially in the music industry. Uh-huh. Because it's a lot of it's a lot of foolishness, but it is it is some good people and it is a way to not have to worry about all the negative and tainted stuff and people doing mm-hmm. stuff that you don't agree with or morally ain't right. You you don't have to deal with that to be successful. You can still 
go to church on Sunday. Yeah. After the fact that you come from a big, the biggest award show there yeah. is. Yeah. You still can, you know, <clears throat> um, you still can go to Walmart like a regular person. Right. Like, like it's it's right. all in what you want it to be. You yeah. know what I'm saying? If you know, but it got to be real to you. As long as it's real to you and you don't stop, it's gonna happen. I thank you so much for your time. So. If anyone else want to get in touch with you, could you give them your social media or your contact information? So if anyone is entering into the music industry, and would, will it be okay for me to refer them to you? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, let us have your social media. All right, so my social media handle on all platforms is Kangaroo809. Okay. Everywhere. Everywhere. Same thing. Thank you. I love you. You simple. Yeah. You got to be able to find me. Like, you got to think. You got to think. Lil Rico 93 on Facebook. And then, uh, 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 I get money, uh, 89 on IG. You can't do that. If you're professional, yeah. it's got to be simple and yeah. easy so people can find you. Thank you, know you so much for your time and thank you for the education, too. Absolutely. And I look forward to working with you and thank you so much that you've done for the Adam A. Brown Foundation. Absolutely. All right.